everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division in the Fuji Open Tournament. The video here is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic, so let's go. Before I take my tee shot here on hole number one, sign up on patreon.com slash golfclashtommy to get the text guide for the tournament, but also to maybe have a training session with me if you do want to improve your game even more. Also, you can find timestamps in the video description down below. So if you don't want to watch hole one, you can go directly to another hole. So the tee shot here, 20% downhill. So we need to add that to our adjustment. Play with a ball that gives you some wind resistance. I would prefer playing with a power one wind two or three ball, like a navigator. Reason being is because I don't want to be in between clubs. And the reason I, I feel that there is a risk of going in between clubs is due to that we do have the cutoff as you can see there for the Goliath. So if you're using a power three ball in Tailwind, then we most likely would be in between clubs if we're not going up and using more backspin. So in Tailwind, I would be using max backspin and aim very close to the green. Here in Headwind, I'm using two bars and in Crosswind, I'm gonna use three bars. And you can see there that I did over adjust the ball guideline to make sure that uh, to make sure that I'm go not going to go short. Now in the end I went short anyway, so I need to over adjust even more. Hole number two, par four of uh, the Sakura Hills, and here we're going to go for the dunk. I feel that the dunk is going to be the best way for us to achieve an eagle from distance. Here I would uh, like to make one change to the setup. It's to use the quarterback due to its uh, very good accuracy and the ball guideline. So we can just get it down there without risking going too far. Because here using the extra mile, we don't really have a good ball guideline. So the risk we do have, which I would say is the biggest risk on this hole to make a mistake is to go too far. Have in mind that you do want to have a ball with a lot of side spin. Side spin three, perfect for the drive, which the katana is a perfect ball to play with. One, we don't have to play with a kingmaker, but of course, if you do have a bunch of them, a kingmaker is betting better than a katana, and it will definitely give you a little bit easier uh, adjustment when it comes to trying to dunk it from a distance. 10% we need to over adjust the drive with, so that we're go getting the ball down there. Otherwise, we're going to most likely have a little bit of a problem hitting the spot that we're aiming for. For the dunk here, now when we're coming for our second shot, we do want to use max backspin, aim for the back of the cup, and then we are just taking our shot. We're going to play uphill, as you can see that the green is on a higher point than the far we are. Therefore, we need to under adjust our shot. So we need to take off 10% to be able to be spot on. Make sure that you really are aiming in the back of the cup and that when you then turn the screen around that you do have the wind arrow pointing completely north. The problem it could be if you do have the wind arrow a little bit wrong or that you're under adjusting or like putting your ball guide, uh, the ball guideline is slightly short of the pin, is that you're going to do the mistake that I'm doing now. Is that I'm going short, my second uh, bounce is, is being at the pin and the ball will fall back down into the bunker again. You don't have to be uh, alarmed about that because from this position it's a very short sandwich and then you should dunk that too. Maybe it seems really uh, like, uh, uh, ridiculous as I just hit the pin here but when we are so short we should always go for the dunk from the sand and from the rough because even if you hit it great you're most likely going to go get the ball in the hole and that's a, a very nice thing to feel so in the end we go for the dunk minus 10% to our adjustment if you don't feel comfortable with the dunk at all then you just play on the side of the pin trying to do a backspin shot as our opponent is doing but it's definitely going to take away the eagle op opportunity a little bit more hole number three here we come over to the gokasho bay so the mix of this tournament is with the sakura hills and the gokasho bay and here we're going to play a course that has been in the game for a very long time and now we're going to play with a ball that gives us a lot of side spin and five bars of top spin. Five bars of top spin in tailwind and when we do have crosswind six bars and in headwind we are of course going to use as much as we can. Aiming up 
with a power two ball. And as I said, side spin three, and then we have power two. We don't need power three in Tailwind. So it's just unnecessary for us to spend a bunch of power three ball, which we most likely have less of than we do have of a power two ball. You need to over adjust 10% to your adjustment due to the slight downhill approach. And the ball is going to travel a little bit further uh, than expected. We bounce over here and the only thing that we are going to focus on is to not go too far. That's why I had the second bounce just clipping the rough to, to like, what can I say, to kind of uh, compensate for the extended ball guy line that you are getting in Tailwind. That's so, so crucial that I would say that it's something that you need to try to, it's need to think of in regular tour play as well. When you do have Tailwind, the second bounce is going to be longer and the third bounce is going to be a little bit longer, and the fourth bounce, etc. And in headwind, it's going to be a shorter bounce due to the compressed ball guideline. Something that we all need to think about a little bit extra sometimes, but in tournament, especially when we do want to aim, end up on the fairway. With a headwind, you can decide. Either you go max over power and try to clear the rough, and uh, most likely going to cut the rough and roll out, or that you're going to lay up on the left side, bouncing over the rough and the sand on the left, and just lay up and having a, a short, a longer shot towards the pin. One thing that is new uh, on this hole compared to what it was a, f a long time ago was that this rough bump is just so thin now. Before we could, we had all this position, or even though that part that is bunker was basically acting like rough, so we could make a rough bump. But here, we do have a very thin rough, so the only thing, only way that I would be going with the rough bump would be in straight crosswind. Because then I know that I can over or under adjust and I still would be hitting the rough. But now when we do have like a tailwind or if I would be having a headwind, then I'll play here on the island. One other thing as well is that if you do have a headwind, use the guardian as your second club, go directly at the green using the backspin for the ball to use the back of the green to fall back down. No elevation adjustment for the second shot, only for the drive. Hole number four, here another course of the Gokasho Bay. And here we are going to play two different ways. It all depends on the wind. If we do have a crosswind or a headwind, we're going to play it on the left side as our opponent is going to do. He is going to go with a maximum curl shot. I don't blame him, but I'm not going to do that. The only thing that I don't want you to do is to try to hit that very narrow fairway that we do have there to the right, which most of the cases is going to mess up for you completely. So in head Headwind, crosswind, we choose the left side. Let's say that the wind, ar wind angle would be completely different. We would be having a tailwind. Then it's time to play with either a power 4 or a power 5 ball. Full blast over power. Try to gain as much distance as possible. I do believe that there will be a possibility with a power 5 ball to do a power slice that you can actually end up, if not on green, but super close towards the green. I'm using a quarterback here. I'm not saying that's wrong, but it's, I'm not saying it's right either. The reason I, I'm i kind of like in between with my thoughts with the quarterback is that I do have headwind. I don't want to go up and having to overpower, even though it's an accurate club like the quarterback. So if I do have a crosswind, I will use the quarterback. Otherwise, I will use the extra mile or Thor's hammer or apocalypse. So I do get the distance without having to overpower. I'm using a kingmaker to reduce the wind. I'm not seeing anything bad with that. You decide what ball you want to play with but I would say from for distance here on the top here of the fairway if you're not coming in more to the right you are going to need the power three ball that's just how it is so the drive 10% extra to our adjustment due to that we're playing downhill and once again when we play downhill the ball is going to be affected more by the wind Second shot, we are going to play with the Sniper. The Sniper is, in my opinion, the best club when it comes to trying to hold it out from distance with our Wood Club. I do understand that some people like the Guardian and and play well with, with the Guardian. I'm not saying to you to change if you hate the Sniper, but I would say that the Sniper definitely increases the opportunity to get the ball to drop from distance than any other club, due to its ball guideline, but also due to its accuracy, which is very, very helpful. But you can also see how valuable the Power 3 ball is. If we do get up to this spot here, we do have our club in almost maximum distance. And a Power 3 ball is very helpful as, of course, as you know, if we do have a headwind in the tournament for the drive, we're going to have a headwind for the second shot as well. And that's the same when it comes to crosswind. And now we do have a tailwind, so it saves us a little bit. Do not compensate this much 
towards the extended bolga line for me, uh, like I'm doing. Use around two, one and a half, two squares before the pin, then you're gonna be fine. The, dri the drive was 10% downhill. The second shot is the same, it's 10% downhill here as well. We go over to the Gokasho Bay once again and the part three. Uh, hole number five as it's called. Now I'm going to play with an approach that gives you a just a secure birdie. But in a tournament we are looking for the way of getting a hole in one. And to get a hole in one on this one we need to play on the left side. I do believe that no matter what type of win we're going to have we're going to play on the left side. And for those of you that has been playing this uh, this hole on Tour 10 going to have a huge advantage over others due to that this hole is super tough. It's not an easy one. I've been uh, having this one up in several training sessions with different players trying to dial this shot in to get it close into our play. Now we're going to try to get it in the hole. But I'm going to use here with the sniper, I'm using a max backspin approach to just show you that if you want to take the safe way, a little amount of chance to get an hole in one but I like I would say 99.9% um, .9 chance of getting a birdie then you're going to play with a max backspin aim on the fairway slash the fringe and then go directly at the pin the guardian would be a better club here but in the end choose to play on the left side like our opponent but we do need to use a different setup than he did as to get that ball in the hole. Last but not least, 20% extra, super important, as this ball is going to be affected a lot more uh, by the wind than it looks. And we bounce, we bounce, we get it kind of close, or let's say not even that close, but we're gonna uh, make that one work better in the tournament. Hole number six, Sakura Hills once again, full blast overpower with the Titan. I'm using max top spin and as much side spin to the right possible. We don't have to use max side spin and max side spin with a Titan. For those of you that know, it's uh, don't know, it's four and a half bars. So I would say take off a little bit, play with one, two, or maximum three bars of side spin to the right. Because if we do hit a great right here, we're going to most likely end up in the rough or into the sand out there to the right, as you can see there by the red marker there on the fairway. But the thing is though, here we do need to make sure that we bounce over the rough and the sand. If we do have tailwind, if we do have a headwind, we need to lay up because we won't be able to reach. Please do not try, because then you will end up in the rough or in the sand. You cannot reach for the green in two with, uh, with a driver like that. 10% extra is needed for the drive as we are playing downhill. When it comes here for the drive as well, I will have to mention, if you do want to take off a little bit of overpower, play with a power five ball, a berserker ball or a snow globe ball. Make sure though that you are aware of that the wind is of course going to be a lot stronger when trying to go for the pain for the second shot. So you kind of decide for a little bit tougher drive and then a little bit easier second shot or the other way around. A little bit easier drive, but a little bit tougher second shot. But the second shot here, we are going to play with a long iron. It's either going to be a long iron or a short iron, depends on how far you're going to drive and uh, going to drive your ball. So here we're going to aim up, trying to find a spot that is like consistent. But the problem with this green, especially now since I've changed it with the green and also with the fairway before, it's that it's very bumpy, very inconsistent. So don't be mad at yourself if you're getting an ego on this one because there won't be that many albatross and I would say if you're gonna bounce it there on the fairway then on the green it's going to be required a little bit of luck. 10% needs to be over adjusted for the second shot as well. Come in here and you can see we're coming up there but not really close. Hole number seven the last par three in the tournament which is one of the Sakura Hills. We're going to bounce before the rough and the sand using the slope there that we do have on the green. This green has been slightly changed uh, since this video is made and th the change has been that we have the pin standing up on a little mound. So that is a little bit harder to get the ball down there because before we could just hit it to the green and the ball would could fall into the into the hole from basically any uh, any any angle. And that's not uh, really skill then it's you know then it's just 
something that is kind of easy. I'm playing with a navigator, wind resistance 2, power 1, and I think navigator would be perfect here. And we're going to aim for the pin, make sure that we do adjust for the compressed and extended ball guideline just as normal as if we have tailwind, the second bounce is going to be longer. If we do have headwind, the second bounce is going to be shorter much important to have in mind sniper key club and of course navigator i'm using here you can definitely play with a kingmaker to reduce the wind even more last but not least 10 percent extra is needed to be able to hit the intended spot last hole of the gokasha bay and we have a par four and we are going to play this one from the left side actually we are not going to use the right side and you can see i hope you can see the reason the reason is that we do have tailwind when you do have tailwind here it's time to pull out at least a power three ball but i would say power five ball would uh, probably be even better but i understand that people might want to save their berserkers or their snow globe balls but in the end playing on the left side is now when we're going to try to gain as much distance to bounce over the uh, the rough and we're going to land as close to the green as possible without going into the bunkers and the thing that we can do is of course if we do not use the correct ball or the correct club we will go short and then we will end up in that rough but in the end that rough ain't going to be a problem 20 percent extra is needed for the adjustment here due to the downhill approach and once again don't do the mistake like our, our opponent did with a power one ball and i'm you know, making uh, the same mistake here, using a power two ball, power three ball minimum, give yourself the distance or you will most likely otherwise be stuck in the rough. If we do have a crosswind or we do have a headwind, then we take off, take away the left side. We are not going to play the left side because then it's too risky. Then we're going to play on the right side, giving our, to lay up as close to the top as possible without dangering going into the rough or uh, the rough there on top. So from that position, we are going to have a possibility to reach for the green in two using our wood club. And that would be the sniper and it would be with a power three ball. I would say, it, so this is two ways to play this hole, completely different ways. And it all de decides by the wind that we're having. Tailwind, easy, we play to the left. Headwind, crosswind, is going to be a little bit tougher and we lay, lay up on the right side. Elevation from the right side, 10% extra for the drive. 20% extra for the second shot but even here from the rough you can see our opponent but we as well are having an opportunity from the rough but I would say medium distance rough iron with a crosswind nah that opportunity is not someone that is something that I would have I would rather take a short iron from the fairway or even a sniper from the fairway towards the pin Last but not least in this playthrough, we're going to go over Sakura Hills Hole 9 and also Hole 9 in the Fuji Open Tournament. And here we do have Tailwind and that would leave me to uh, take, yeah, like to not play with a Power 3 ball. I would say that the Power 3 ball should be the general ball selection for you once playing this hole. Reason being is that we do want to have the distance, we don't want to stretch out and having to adjust from overpower, but we also, if we do have a crosswind or we do have a, a headwind, we do need to be able to use that distance we do have on the power three ball. Here with the navigator using four and a half bar top spin, I would say use one or two bar side spin to the left as well. Now I'm, I'm not, yeah, lucky I would say to actually hit great left because now I do get into a perfect angle. I'm not risking bouncing into the rough in any form. So therefore I do want, of course, us all to focus and hit the ball perfect, but we also want to add that side spin there to the left. If we do have a strong headwind and we might not even have some power three balls or some uh, power three balls or something like that, then please make sure that you're playing on the left side instead uh, and taking yourself away uh, from the risk of getting stuck into the rough or into the sand to the right. Our opponent playing with a basic ball and you know it's uh, uh, a little bit too risky in my opinion, definitely a possibility and our opponent gets pretty close even though it cuts the tree. By no mean like we do not want to get stuck by the trees there in the middle if you do get in there or get stuck behind or get into the rough you cannot reach for the green too that's just how it is 
So, second shot here, we're going to bounce the ball over towards the pin. Here I'm using the Guardian level 5, but I would rather use a Sniper level 7 plus. We don't need that much backspin, but we at least need like a 3 or 4 bars backspin when approaching the pin. And the reason I want to have the Sniper instead of the Guardian, accuracy, ball guideline, much easier to get the ball close and therefore getting the ball to drop as well. And here we can also say if we do make a, a mess with our drive, it is important to have the power three ball here as well. So play with a power three ball, use the sniper as the second club. First shot, 10% extra due to the downhill approach. Second shot as well, 10% extra. And then you're gonna be close to the pin. So, this was the playthrough for Pro and Expert Division uh, in the Fuji Open Tournament. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Also, once again, if you do want to get the text guide for the Fuji Open, or maybe prepare yourself to get the, up the updated text guide, which will be with pinpointed detailed information, land screenshots of landing positions, everything you need to improve your tournament play those are only for patrons sign up to the ultimate text text guide packets there on the uh, channel or like on the patron channel so the video here is sponsored by golf clash and play demic and i want to wish you the best of luck in the fuji open tournament